Let's see. So tonight, basic needs. We have Christian Beamish. He's my neighbor, a very close friend of mine. I met Christian when I moved into the neighborhood two years ago, and he, he's a, he's a legend, right? You maybe you've heard of him before. I have, and I'm, we're in a surfing community. So Surfers Journal is is an establishment that he used to work for and still contributes. Surfer Magazine, these things you've heard of. But he's featured in there, and most importantly, in my opinion, is the cormorant was featured in there, and I, it was a story that said, wow, there's there's a surfer, okay, so a lot of surfers, they're, they're similar, and then some of us <laughs> are different, and um, Christian is on the different side, and it's basically about surfers that are outside of the box that are doing some really exciting stuff, and so how about the idea of building your own boat from scratch? and then going on surf adventure. And I thought that was really great. So these are these stories, and on my street is where we live. I saw the corner, and I said, I know that boat. So, you know, we're familiar. We, we after just kind of walking down the street, we became close friends and, and um, you know, still, still neighbors and close friends. But it was just, you know, to see the boat and to meet Christian, and, and, uh, and you guys are going to fall in love with, with the story as well. So. I'd like to just hand it over, and, and before I do, actually, I keep, things keep coming. I want to thank our volunteers, um, and some of the volunteers are here, a lot of our volunteers are here today, and some aren't here today, but our board of directors is really important to our organization, and Harry Helling is the chairman of our board of directors, and it means a lot that he's here, and, and he brought his family, we love the family, and um, other volunteers that are here today, um, a couple that are, one that's leaving to Senegal, Ben Kramer, and he's probably right in front of me. Oh, there he goes. Ben's off to Senegal with the Peace Force, so Ben's been an incredible asset here this summer. I know Bridget Lanigan's here, and, and a lot of you guys are volunteers with us, but um, thanks to everyone. I'm going to hand this over to Christian without any more. <laughs> um, thank you, Evan. And uh, I'd like to thank the Ecology Center for having me. Um, I'm really looking forward to just kind of falling into uh, story mode. I'm, I'm a talker by nature, um, which is kind of funny because um, this whole thing has been about, to a large extent, uh, has been about solitude. <laughs> solitude so I can come talk about it, I suppose. Um, I think what I'd like to do is have you imagine with me um, the end of a long day sailing? We are in Alta, California now, right? Um, but just 50 or 60 miles down the way begins the beautiful peninsula of Baja, California. And in 2009, in fact, the begin the first day of 2009, I set sail in the Cormorant from uh, San Diego Harbor and um, began making my way down the coast of Baja in 20, 30 mile sails. If the conditions were bad, I would hang. Sometimes I would just at anchor. Um, sometimes I'd drag the boat up along uh, up some beach and uh, the local fishermen would say, de donde eres, you know, de donde vienes? And I'd say, de San Diego. And they'd say, loco. <laughs> See. <laughs> so, come on board the cormorant. Here we go. All right. Um, I don't have the rudder set up because I don't have the clearance uh, to set it up. But this is the rudder, and I'm going to shout for a minute. And it hangs off the back like so. This arm sticks out because I've got this mizzen mast here. And so I control the rudder with the tiller, so many moving parts, that connects, and I push the pole, and you can see the, the hardware on the back there, on the, on the stern. So that's how, that's how we steer. So, that's just a little scent, so. <laughs> This mode of travel. Oh. 
So, I alternately, in six hours, say, of sailing, I alternately, sit, the, the, the tiller comes about, like, here, I alternately just sit on the aft, aft thwart and sail away. The prevailing wind, of course, in California is, is northwesterly. Um, and so funny enough, I am vaguely pointing south, I think. Um, so, so the sail is kind of winged out like this, and, and it's just down the coast. Keep the, keep the land on your left, and uh, you know, I, got, I had charts, so I had kind of a sense of where I was sometimes, um, sometimes not at all. Um, alternately, I would get, get down a little lower, and the, the life jacket can be very comfortable. You have a little pad right here, and kick back and, you know, feel like a yachtsman. Um, <laughs> Sa sailing along so uh so this is about the, the the scale of the thing so i invited you to imagine that we're in baja california I'm, i was trying to pick a, um, a certain spot for for lack of anything better um let's say we're, we're coming into um puerto santo tomas which is uh 25 miles south of ensenada um and there's the blowhole la, Buf la, la bufadora is about 12 miles north of there. So an, a, a pleasant afternoon sail would bring us around the headland of, uh, of Puerto Santo Tomas, and we would come into the cove and find a nice place to anchor. I'll, I'll tell you the, 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 the real story. Uh, <laughs> the wind changed and that was an adventure. But, but what I want to demonstrate before I get into that is how all this this works. It's it's really simple, and that's I think the joy of this mode of travel. So I um, I demonstrated the rudder. So we we pull up. I th I throw the anchor, which I don't have here tonight. Um, throw the anchor, set the boat. Actually, I probably drop the sail, which I will do. Um, and then I have to get the rudder out of the water because I don't want the rudder, you know, moving back and forth and working against the hardware all night. Um, so the first thing we have to do is drop the sail. So. This is called the halyard. It's very simple. It's just a line that goes through a hole in the top of the mast and down comes the sail. Okay, night night. Down comes the sail, okay. In, in the interest of uh, in the interest of moving along, I'll just leave the mizzen sail, the aft sail, down. But I would, if I wasn't tied off, I would bring it up and, and tie that off. So we got no sail. There's no, nothing for the wind to blow around. Um, the anchor's down. The boat is secure. This is my world. Five and a half feet wide, eighteen feet long. Um, do I have the luxury of moving around here? Yes. I keep this cockpit area open but i've got dry bags stuffed down here i've got water casks here i've got my surfboards on the left left did i say left port side rather um, <laughs> um a fishing rod uh here because well we have to fish um and now evening's coming on and and with evening comes dew and um you know the talk about basic needs uh one of the basic needs of course is shelter so um, very basic shelter goes like this aboard Cormorant. Two fiberglass battens. And uh, think, think covered wagon. Um, again, I'm going to um, stow the mic and set up the boat tent for you quickly here. Okay. Actually. Learn, you learn all sorts of tricks, like the stiff one goes aft because there's a little bit more width, so the more flexible one goes forward. Like so. Okay, boom. Oh, and of course we're rocking, right? But it's surprisingly, surprisingly stable. I have fallen overboard just once. Um, ah, the oar. Or lays down. Okay. Or okay. How many feet of water? Um, the water line is. Is about 
mm, here. Again, how deep? Two feet. Yeah, pretty close. Um, a lot of times I, I take advantage of that shallow draft to be able to tuck in really close under a cliff or something, you know. There's, um, but of course, if you get in, if you get in too close, um, there's wave action. So sometimes, counterintuitively, it's better to be out farther into the wind and the elements because um, your anchor is going to hold. This is the uh, this is the. The Boy Scout, the Boy Scout in me loves this. Well, this whole thing is like a Boy Scout. <laughs> and I'll tell you, after I, after I uh, set this up, I'll, I'll tell you about the vision, and I call it a vision, um, for this whole undertaking. Impractical, but it doesn't really cost much. And so, you know, is going, is, is, it, is a High Sierra trip, is it practical to go to the High Sierra? you know, John Muir style, not necessarily, but it does something for us, doesn't it? You know, it's, it's worthwhile, so, um, or it's, it's, maybe, it's maybe the Edmund Hillary thing, you know, what, why do it? Because it's there, you know, because it's possible, because you can. That seems to me to be enough reason. So, you can see how this is, this is working. Now, add Add uh, add 30 knots of wind. Add two days of not sleeping. Add, hmm, what else can we add? Well, that's enough, isn't it? Um, you know, this number. And, and, and this operation gets a lot more interesting. Uh, so. So not much shelter, right? But fortunately in Baja, it doesn't rain too much. Again, this, this uh, aft sail, this is called the mizzen sail. This would be furled. So this little loop around here would just, would just uh, go right around the sail. And I made these nifty, I think they're nifty little buttons and I just go something like this put the button and it holds it down this goes around the mast I'm gonna do the, the, the quick and dirty here it's never it's never beautiful in the best of circumstances but it does the job. Um, ah, where does the guy sleep? Well, that's easily answered. I love the two-in-one solution, the, the, the multiple uses. These, these benches are uh, a little narrow, and if you have a bony posterior, um, they definitely are narrow. So I, I made these these bench covers to sort of give give a little bit more width, but they serve the second purpose, which I love, of making a sleeping platform. Up goes the sail. Out of the way. Okay. My sleeping bag. <laughs> Good night. And so goes the night. Or actually, before you go to sleep, you have your um, camping stove, your MSR stove, set up right here. Of course, the the, the fishermen in their pongas are coming back from the days, the day's work, <laughs> and you're going through this rigmarole, <laughs> and you're alone, and you're like 40 years old, and they're like. What? <laughs> I don't know. No, that's all. Uh, um.